Most things that never get done, never get done because they never get started. You wait, wait, and wait, and wait, and you wait so long that the thing doesn't even matter anymore. And the days turn to weeks, and the weeks turn to months, and the months turn to years. Years of mediocrity is what causes people to be bitter. If you want to get around bitter and complaining people, get around people who are not seeing much activity. They're bitter, they're complaining, they're cynical, and they're jealous because nothing is happening. Because nothing is going on in their life. And if you want to stop that from happening to you, wake up in the bed and know what you're going after. Get up out of the bed with an agenda. When you have an agenda, you don't spend time worrying about how you feel. Because it doesn't make any difference how you feel. You woke up with something to do. If you would like to discipline yourself, which is a very good idea, pick a direction you want to go first. Pick a goal you would like to attain, a long, medium to long term goal. Might imagine something you need and want, some attainment that, that would motivate, whose pursuit would motivate you. You can ask yourself that. It's a good question to ask yourself in general. You know, If you could have what you needed and wanted, what would that be? And that's a meditative question. You, you don't want to force an answer out of yourself. You want to ask yourself that like you'd ask someone else. If I could have what I wanted, what would that look like? And you can you can ask yourself that in a more differentiated way. If I could have the relationship that I needed and wanted, if I could have the friendships, if I could have the job or career, if I could have the educational pathway, if I could adopt civic responsibility, if I could engage in some creative enterprise. The next goal is to take your goal and to fragment it into micro goals until you find a micro goal that's small enough Enough, that it still presents some challenge that you will do. Stop waiting for something to move you and move yourself. Every day, move yourself. In the morning, move yourself. In the afternoon, move yourself. At night, move yourself. Be very intentional and very deliberate about moving yourself. Through the inspiration of desperation, you'll become more creative than ever before. Throw your whole self into it. See, most people go at it tentatively. They don't give all their stuff. They don't concentrate. And if you don't have what you want, stop telling yourself the story because you don't have the money, you don't have the time. That's bullshit. It's because you haven't committed yourself where you would burn your boats. If you want to take the fucking island, burn your fucking boats and you will take the island because people, when they're going to either die or succeed, tend to succeed. Stand up for your dreams. Stand up for what you want in your life. Decide that your life is so meaningful to you, that you love you and you love life so much that you're going to stand up for something you want. You don't want to be a spectator. You want to get out in the field where the action is, and you will be amazed. After the struggle, there will be a calm period, and things will begin to click for you. Come out here with what you got. You don't have enough money? Don't worry about it. You got the dream. You must be patient, persistent, and positive, no matter what. But aren't there some guarantees you can give us? Yes, you're going to die. You can't get out of life alive. So I'm saying to you, you got six months to live. Live your life now. Live your dreams now. Start acting like this is your last day on the planet. Have you ever heard the expression, I don't know where it all goes? Well, from now on, make a new commitment to financial independence and to the value and the feeling that comes from knowing where it all goes and where it all comes from. It is just one of those important disciplines that cause you to prove to yourself that you are on a new road, walking in a new direction, becoming a new person and arriving at a new destination. Without that effort, you will keep falling back Hey, I found out you can make $5,000 a month and still go broke. You say, how could you go broke making $5,000 a month? It's easy. Spend $6,000. And when you make $5,000, spending $6,000 is not that difficult. Someone once said, if your outgo exceeds your income, your upkeep becomes your downfall. So be the master over whatever you have and whatever you are. That's where the seeds of greatness are sown. Great wealth, great health, great results, great influence, and great lifestyle. Take interest and even delight in doing all the small things well. It makes you a sophisticated person who knows where the beginnings of wealth and happiness are. There's a Bible phrase that we could quote here that would be appropriate. It says, 
if you will be faithful over a few things, the small things, you will someday be ruler over many things and major things. That's it. That's the philosophy that counts. Let's say that you could pick your le you can pick your level of competition in life to some degree. Okay, so let's say you pick a level of competition where you're always winning. It's like, well, all that means is you've picked the wrong level of competition. Yes. Because, you know, like, let's say you're a grandmaster chess player and you're, all you do is play amateurs. And every night you go home and congratulate yourself on what a genius you are because you just stomp these people left, right, and center. It's like, you're not a genius. You're a dimwit. Right. What you should be doing is playing people who are beating you like, well, as much as you can tolerate. Right. So maybe that's 40% of the time. Maybe it's 60% of the time. But that way, because to be a winner... You want to be disciplined, you want to know what you're doing, and then you want to be on the edge where your skills are being developed. And if you're going to be on the edge where your skills are going to be developed, you're, you're at a place where, where loss, where losing is always a possibility. Because otherwise you're not pushing yourself beyond your current capacity. And so, one of the things that I've outlined in 12 Rules for Life is, is a theory of meaning. Because meaning, as far as I'm concerned, the sense of meaningful engagement is the antidote to malevolence and suffering, essentially. Because you want to have a life that's so engaging that you think, despite the fact that I'm limited and that we're mortal and that life is tragedy and there's evil in the world, despite all that, this is worth doing. And I think that, that there's, there's, a, there's a technical meaning that, that, that genuinely exists. And that's the meaning that you get when you're in a domain where you have some discipline and some skill, so you're laying out your competence and, and your, your ability, but you're simultaneously pushing yourself to develop past where you are. That's really engrossing. And what's that do, what that is doing is expanding your competence. And so life is suffering and betrayal in, in, in many senses of the word, but you can adopt a way of traversing through life that is more powerful than the tragedy and the malevolence. The art of true living in this world is more like a wrestler's than a dancer's practice. For in this they both agree to teach a man whatsoever falls upon him, that he may be ready for it and that nothing may cast him down. If you do the job in a principled way, with diligence, energy and patience, if you keep yourself free of distractions and keep the spirit inside you undamaged, as if you might have to give it back at any moment. If you can embrace this without fear or expectation, can find fulfillment in what you're doing now, as nature intended, and in superhuman truthfulness, every word, every utterance, then your life will be happy. Your ability to control your thoughts, treat it with respect. It's all that protects your mind from false perceptions, false to your nature, and that of all rational beings, it's what makes thoughtfulness possible and affection for other people. You need to avoid certain things in your train of thought. Everything random, everything irrelevant, and certainly everything self-important or malicious. You need to get used to winnowing your thoughts so that if someone says, what are you thinking about? You can respond at once and truthfully that you are thinking this or thinking that the obstacle is the way. Embrace the challenges that come your way in your work, for they hold the potential for growth and self-improvement. Instead of resisting or complaining about difficulties, use them as opportunities to cultivate resilience, patience, and perseverance. Remember that your attitude towards work matters more than the work itself. Approach each task with a sense of purpose and dedication, regardless of its nature or perceived significance. Find fulfillment in the process of striving and giving your best effort, rather than relying solely on external outcome. Think of your many years of procrastination. How the gods have repeatedly granted you further periods of grace, of which you have taken no advantage. It is time now to realize the nature of the universe to which you belong and of that controlling power whose offspring you are and to understand that your time has a limit set to it. Use it then to advance your enlightenment or it will be gone and never in your power again.